2022. It just feels like a great year for DayZ to me. But if you've never played DayZ before, DayZ is... Oh, no way. You just started playing the game again after five years of pushing it away because it was too buggy? <laughs> well, damn, dude. Things have changed a lot since you've been gone. But uh, how about we go over a handful of beginner level tips on how to survive the 2022 Daisy Wastelands to get you back up to speed. Or, you know, if you're brand new to the game, then, uh, you know, welcome aboard the Daisy Hype Train. You just got it for free on Game Pass because your buddy told you to, didn't you? Helmets that cover your face. <laughs> Sadly, I need to start the video with this one. If you intend on interacting with other players in the game, do not wear helmets that cover your face as they will muffle your voice. It will deter people from wanting to talk to you and you'll miss out on big opportunities for adventuring. Not to mention there are people out there that KOS motorbike helmet wearers. So just keep that in mind. In-game VoIP volume. If you're like me and you like to find people in game to run with you or you just like using the in-game comms with your friends, make sure you know how to toggle the different VoIP volume modes. There's a whisper, which only people within a very short proximity can hear you speak, a yell, in which people can hear you at a wider range, and then there's regular VoIP, easy to hear within a few meters. Knowing when to toggle whisper to devise a plan with a buddy, or using the yell to call someone out at a distance can be key to interacting with other players. On PC, to toggle through these different VoIP volume ranges, all you need to do is press the up arrow on your keyboard. Emotes. On PC, you can hold down the period button to activate an emote wheel. This works great in communication with others as you try to point them into a direction, tell them to be quiet while you hold a building, and even if you need to comply while being held up. There are endless possibilities with the use of emotes in interaction, and you can even use the row of F keys to hotkey your favorite ones. Crafting a knife. This basic crafting recipe can be a lifesaver if you're struggling to find a decent tool to open cans with or gut a chicken with as you start off. All you need are two small stones which can be found on hiking trails, train tracks, and dirt roads. You hold one in hand and combine it with the other one, hold down left mouse button, and craft an improvised knife. Crafting a backpack. If you aren't a fan of brightly colored backpacks like me, you can always craft your own improvised pack. Currently, you can craft the burlap bag, a fur bag, and leather backpack. But for a more in-depth tutorial on making them, make sure to click on the card icon on the top right for my full craftable backpack tutorial. Cleaning your hands. Fishing, hunting, and killing chickens can be a great way of sourcing your food, especially in your early stages of surviving. However, one of the biggest mistakes new players make is that they forget to wash their hands after cutting up an animal. If you look closely, you'll see that your player's hands will be bloody after gutting any type of animal. So, you need to find a water source to clean them off before eating anything. Otherwise, you will get sick and need charcoal tablets to cure it. An easy way to avoid this is to wear gloves while gutting an animal, as they keep your hands clean and safe to eat with. Don't drink the poop water. As a fresh bond, it can be tempting to drink water found in bottles that you find if you don't know where the local water well is. But don't. Drinking this poopy water will result in sickness if your immune, immune, yeah, immune, immune system is low. It's also safer to dump out water by holding the water vessel in your hand and looking down to get the pour out prompt. Or by combining a poop water container with chlorine tablets, which you can find in medical and hunting spawns, or by pouring the poop water into a pot and boiling it over a fire. Immune System As mentioned before, your immune system is based on the fullness of your hydration and hunger levels, as well as your health and your blood. The better shape your vitals are in, then the better your immune system is. For example, if your health, blood, food, and water levels are all at 100% full, then you're healthy enough to actually eat raw meat and drink dirty water without consequence. I don't quite see why you would do that, but it could be useful somewhere down the road, so who knows. Baking your food. In recent updates, baking has significantly buffed the caloric values of all foods. Meat, filet, mushrooms, fruits, veggies can all be baked, which can sometimes double or triple its raw caloric value. 
I would even argue that it's more worth your time to hold out on eating that spawn fruit until you have time to cook it by a fire. Burnt food. If you just took my advice from before and you tried to bake your food, but you ended up burning it, <laughs> please don't eat it. If your immune system is low, this can get you sick with food poisoning. Craftable fishing supplies. One of the best ways to always be able to provide yourself with easy food is by crafting fishing supplies. All you need is a rope, some bones, and a knife, and you'll be set for food your entire in-game life. Combining your knife and the bones will give you the option to craft a bone hook. And then you use your knife while looking at the ground, and that will give you an option to dig for worms which can be attached to the hook as bait. And then all you simply do is combine your rope with a long stick, and you make an improvised fishing rod. Put the hook on the rod, boom, you can fish. And the beauty of this method is that the fishing rod can actually be broken down, and it'll return your rope. So all you need to really do is carry the rope and some bones with you on your journey, and you can recraft the rod, make more hooks, and boom, you have food whenever you need it. Staying warm. Keep an eye on your temperature meter. Trinaris can be a very cold place, and I'm not just talking about the bandits. If you find yourself with a light blue temperature gauge, you can catch a cold, which will result in coughing, sneezing, a fever, etc. And to make matters worse, if you get into the dark blue temperature, you take on all those risks, plus you start losing health due to hypothermia. Avoid this by finding better insulated clothing items, making sure your clothes are dry, you can wring them out and dry them off by a fire, and by utilizing fires in the game if it's nighttime and you start to get too cold. Sitting by a fire for a few minutes will give you a heat buff that generally lasts between 7 to 10 minutes, this can vary, and will protect you from the cold completely. Changing firing modes. Something a lot of new players, or even returning players, won't know is that you can change the firing mode on most weapons. Assault rifles can have a semi-auto, a burst, and a full auto mode, while blazes and double barrel shotguns can switch between single and double shots. On your keyboard, simply press X with the weapon in hand to change firing modes, if your weapon has that ability, of course. The difference between being on semi-auto and full auto can be a lifesaver in PvP. Stamina. Tons of new players love to load into the game and hoard every piece of loot they find. Although tempting, don't do it. By doing just a little bit of research, like watching streamers manage their loot, or by simply using a little bit of trial and error, you can easily determine what will be needed to survive along your adventure. Keep what you need at the time, and not just everything you might use. Keep your stamina as high as possible so that you can be able to outrun and outflank your enemies in combat, so that you can power hit players and zombies in melee more efficiently, and so that you can jump over walls and... Here comes the next tip. So you can hold your breath longer while sniping. By pressing down and holding your left control key, you can hold your breath while aiming down sight with a weapon. This is important with any weapon, but especially when using a long range weapon to snipe. Being able to hold your breath just an extra second or two can be the difference between you getting a chance at a good shot, or you losing your breath, losing your shot, and blowing your cover. Stamina is important, and hoarding loot will slowly chip away at your stamina level, making you less likely to win in PvP fights, at least in my experience. Conceal your weapons. A nice early game strategy that I use all the time is that I hide any melee or firearm weapons, if possible, as I start off in the spawn area. Most other players don't think about it, but other freshies are probably in your area too. And if they see you with a dangerous weapon on your back, or in your hands even, they will likely try to kill you for your loot for their own personal gain, despite the chances of them winning or not. Keeping your weapon concealed, if possible, is always a nice card to keep up your sleeve in case they get too close and you get the impression they might pull a fast one on you anyway. They won't even know what hit them when you pull a sledgehammer out your pants, and I'm not talking about power swings. Speaking of melee combat, did you know that you can stun lock your enemy and even zombies with a power swing? On PC, if you hold shift and tap left click with your fist or melee raised, you can perform a powerful stun lock punch that temporarily freezes the enemy, putting you in position to win some easy fights and getting some free loot, baby. 
By spacing out your power strikes carefully, you can get up to three or four power swings without them being able to react. And you will be more likely to knock them out if you land them all and hit them in the head. Running attacks. If you end up missing out on the stunlock combos and your victim gets away, you can chase them down and do a very powerful running attack. While sprinting, holding shift as you move, spamming left click will result in your character throwing a haymaker power running attack that hits from a decent range and will land as long as you keep the line of sight on them as you perform the animation. Kicking. Another melee trick that has literally saved my life is using the kick feature. If you lay prone, raise your fists, and spin around on your back and you left click, you'll perform a kick that sends your opponent backwards and stuns them for a second. You never know when you'll need to use the kick move, but now you know how to do it. Leaning around corners. A simple trick when in a tense fight is to try and find cheeky spots to hold angles from or to utilize cover around you to get off quick shots. Use Q and E on mouse and keyboard to lean left and right around corners and cover to do so. Looting. In combat, you might eventually kill another player. Exciting. But never loot them straight away. <laughs> this will get you killed so many times. I know it has for me. You'll need to flank around and make sure the area is safe and that your victim didn't have another friend in the area or there isn't another group trying to sneak up and steal your spoils. Once you feel that the area is safe, I would also advise you to never loot the body where you killed it. I personally prefer to strip their gear and move it into a defendable house or a bush that provides really nice cover. Either way, move that loot to another spot so you can safely take what you would like. Suppressors. Despite what you think, suppressors do not silence your shots. They are called suppressors because they make the sounds quieter, but not totally silent. High caliber pistols that are suppressed can still attract zombie attention, especially if you spam fire or you miss your shots. Throwing items. If you ever find yourself surrounded by zombies and you want to stealthily escape the area, you can actually try throwing an item to distract them. Any item should work, so I like to keep a smoke grenade that I don't want to use, a stone, a flare, or you can just use the new alarm clock to distract a horde to buy you time and stealthily move away. Take your shoes off. No, this isn't a foot fetish thing, I promise. <laughs> One trick that I like to use that I think is on the rise thanks to Kill Beans uh, is taking your shoes off to sneak. Shoes and boots can be loud and clunky and very easy to detect. If you take off your shoes, your player will be very hard to hear while moving especially in combat. I use this in CQC and ambush situations. This will give you the element of surprise in those situations if you play your cards right. Keep in mind that you can take on bleeds, but they are minor and you won't lose much blood from them. And when you get these bleeds, your character makes a loud groaning noise, which can give you away. So you need to take your time and not move too fast, or you can use this next tip, gag yourself. Okay, this is getting down a really weird potential path, but trust me, just trust me on this one. This, this works, I swear. By holding a single rag in your hand and left click holding, you can gag yourself. This trick will significantly muffle sneezes, coughing, shivering, and the groan you get while maneuvering around without shoes on your feet. As a mostly solo daisy player, I use this trick all the time in combat to ambush my victims and it works very well. More gear equals more noise. Earlier, I spoke about gear weighing you down in combat. But if you have two rifles on your back, plus a full vest, plus a full field backpack, and your pockets are stuffed with every ounce of food and every bullet you find ever, then you'll be super noisy as you move around. Carrying more gear will make your movements more noticeable to players on audio and to zombies. So, yet another reason to pack light and avoid hoarding. ADS to avoid noise. When holding a building, Sneezes, coughs, shivers, etc. can be grossly annoying and blow your cover. However, if you find a cozy corner and are able to ADS while holding an angle, you won't make any sounds. However, make sure your stomach is full because if you're starving and your stomach rumbles, <laughs> they're going to hear that. Crouch walking. When you hear another player or you're trying to sneak up on someone, just make sure to utilize crouch walking. It is way quieter than sprinting. And when timed with zombie movement, the enemy reloading or eating food, anything, any kind of noise, 
it can be virtually undetectable. When you sprint around, it can alert zombies at a bigger distance and players are able to track it down much easier. Stealth kills. In recent updates, the devs have added and even tweaked a little bit a stealth kill animation on zombies. You can take a single-handed bladed melee, slow crouch up behind a zombie and perform a silent backstab animation if you stand up and melee them as usual. You need to be very selective and sneaky as to how you do this. Zombies that see or are very close to the stealth kill can still be alerted and cause an unwanted scene. I usually only perform the action if one zombie is in my way or if they're nearby a point of interest that I need to access, like a well. And well, there you have it I guess. Beginner level tips that should help you get started in DayZ 2022. If you'd like to see more beginner DayZ content as well as some daily live streams, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I'd also like if you commented what you want to see me cover next. Anyway, that's it for now, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.